All right, so you're probably familiar with this process. You're subscribed to a software, you go to your settings, you go to billing, and then you can edit your plan or view your billing history. If that software uses Stripe for payments, you will be handed off to a Stripe portal where you can view uh, all of your billing information and make updates. Now, traditionally, this is semi-complex to set up. You have to do some custom code to integrate with the Stripe API. But what I wanna show you is a way to do this without any uh, fancy coding. You can do it through no code. And this is how I have it set up. This is a content directory that I created recently, and I wanted to give people the ability to view free and paid content. So if I go and look at my pro courses and click on one of these, it's going to say, "Uh oh, you don't have access. You need to go pro today. But then if I come to the same portal and I'm logged in as a uh, privileged user, I can do that same filter. And whenever I click on one of these courses, it takes me directly to the course. And then as a paid user, if I want to make updates, I can go to my profile and click on manage account. And then that will bring me to my Stripe customer portal. And all this is set up without having to write any code. So let me walk you through how I set this up. The first thing you're going to need is a Stripe account and set up all your, your Stripe payment stuff. And then the first thing you wanna do is create a payment link. Now I'm inside of the Stripe test environment, so all this is just dummy information, but let me go ahead and create a new product. So I'll just call this YouTube uh, Course Premium. I'll set a price of $5 and we can make this a recurring subscription. So call it a monthly subscription. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that product. All right, so now I have a product created and I can add in some other information if I want to collect the user's address or require phone numbers or anything else. But I'm gonna leave all of that turned off for now and create this link. So now whenever someone is on your site or my site and we want them to upgrade to premium, all we need to do is tell them to go to this link. Here they can check out and make a payment through your Stripe payment link. And then once they make this payment, well, now we know they have paid inside of Stripe, but we need to get that information back to your website or your app. And the way we can do that is through something like Zapier. Here I have a Zap set up to be triggered so that when there is a new subscription in Stripe, so whenever somebody subscribes to my payment link, I then add them inside of Airtable. So you can see here, I'm creating a new record inside of new website with the user's email name, and then I'm giving them a status of active. And we can see that inside of Airtable here. You can see I have all these people, and then here is the active status. And then this is the value that I'm checking inside of my app to see if the user has an active subscription. So if we come over here and go to the collection, if we go to actions, we can click on edit action, and then here you can see I'm checking if guide access is pro and the user status is not active, then I'm showing them a screen where they need to sign up else they can go and view the content. So this active status is what controls their access to things throughout the app. All right, so that gives them access to the pro content within your app, but let's say you are using a subscription and you want the user to be able to edit their subscription without you having to edit it for them within Stripe or within your system. Well, to do that, we need to create a customer portal. And that's what we created here in the view profile I was showing you earlier. We can go and manage your account. To set this up, Stripe also makes it really, really easy. So if you go to Stripe and you can just type in, I'll show you, just go to customer or type in portal and it'll bring you to the settings, billing, customer portal page. And then here you can set up your own customer portal. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate a test link for this. So this gives me a link that I can send users to. And then I can customize this based off what I want. If I wanna show them all of their payments, I'll leave invoice history on. If I want the user to be able to view and update their information, they can do that there. I can change the payment methods that are accepted. I can allow them to cancel, pause subscriptions or change other things. All this can be customized through here. And all I had to do was just click a button and that created this page where they can edit this information. So the only distinction between this customer portal and the kind of more premium one 
is that when you go to this no code one, the user has to enter in their email to authenticate that they can access their account. But we can simplify this for our users since we know their email. So if we go back to Airtable, I've created this column where it enters in the distinct URL that Stripe created, but then it adds in the email as a parameter to that so that when you go to this link, it pre-fills it. And this is really simple. So you just paste in the URL and then you add a question mark and then you type in pre-filled email and then append on the end, the user's email. And so that way, whenever they go to this link, they just enter in their email, they request a code to be sent to them by Stripe, they enter in that information, and then they can come to your customer portal to update their subscription. And then the final step is if you are doing a subscription and you're not doing like a one-time payment, and so you are using this method, well then you would just create another Zap to be triggered whenever a subscription is canceled, then you would come and update a record in Airtable to change the status to not be active anymore, and that would remove their access to everything. Hey, Darren here. I wanted to share a few extra tips with you as a thank you for watching to the end of this video. A lot of people are just gonna skip through and not get all this extra stuff. So here are three things I wanted to share with you related to this topic. The first thing, since you are considering using Stripe as your subscription service, one thing that I found out after kind of in implementing it is that you might think that going directly to Stripe, you're removing all those extra charges on top of the processing fees. So as you may know, Stripe charges 2.9% or 3.4%, somewhere in there for every credit card transaction. On top of that, Stripe also charges point, around 0.8% for kind of setting up the subscription for you. So the mechanism that does the subscription, Stripe is charging you for that. And it's kind of hidden in Stripe, so you might not realize that that's happening. So there are a lot of other membership softwares out there, and some of them charge crazy amounts, even like when you're just getting started out, like up to 9% or somewhere, like craziness, craziness. Don't go with those solutions, but also know that if you're going directly with Stripe, there is still a little bit there. There is another platform that does membership stuff that I found recently that's really, really nice. And it's called Outseta. I have a link to it down in the description. In addition to setting up the recurring subscription for you, it also provides a CRM, allows you to email your clients, create a help desk portal, gives you the little chat bubble on your website and uh, a lot more. And they do all of this for instead of just 0.8%, which you're getting with Stripe, they do this for 1% of the subscription, plus a small monthly fee based off your number of users. So it's really pretty sweet for the extra stuff you get. And the last thing I wanted to share is, since you are kind of in the market thinking about creating a portal for your clients, setting up recurring subscriptions, if you haven't decided on a platform to build your own custom client portal or this app that you're building, I wanted to present my favorite no-code app builder, Glide. Glide allows you to build custom applications driven by your data without any code, and I freaking love it. So if you want to see a video similar to this one, go ahead and check out this playlist that I have on the screen. It's a five part series where I walk you through building your own custom no code portal with Glide. It's one of my most popular series recently and I think you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.